everyone. It's Brady from Snap Ed. Um, I hope you're all doing well. Uh, it looks like we're finally getting some good weather, so hopefully you guys are getting outside and playing and having some fun with your friends and your families. Um, so I know that your Snap classes were cut a little short this year, and we weren't able to finish all of them. Um, so I wanted to do something a little different. Um, and so what we're doing is we're making these little videos to talk about the fruits and vegetables that you would have had if we were able to uh, finish the rest of our classes. Um, so today's class, this class, it would have been around tropical fruits. So how many of you know what kind of fruits are considered tropical fruits? Hmm. So I'll give you a hint. Tropical fruits are fruits that need really, really warm weather in order to grow. Um, so all of the tropical fruits, we can't grow here in Maine unless we had like a super warm greenhouse or something like that. But it gets too cold here, even in the summertime, for, for these tropical fruits to grow. So have you thought of any? Given any guesses? So the tropical fruit group is made up of a couple different fruits, um, including fruits like coconut, papaya, pomegranate, uh, mangoes, um, and star fruit. And for the students that I've had class with while we were in school, we've talked about star fruit before. It's a pretty interesting looking fruit and I encourage everyone to go out and try it if you haven't tried one yet. The other fruit in this tropical fruit group is the one that we would have been trying um, in class, the one I'm going to kind of talk about today. And that's this guy right here. Does anybody know what kind of fruit this is? And no, it's not SpongeBob's house, <laughs> although they are kind of, they do kind of look the same. So this is a pineapple. And so again, pineapples are considered a tropical fruit, which means that they need really, really warm weather for a really long time in order to grow. The word pineapple actually comes from um, its similarity to a pine cone. And so if you've ever been outside playing or walking around in the woods, um, you might have seen these pine cones before. They're long and brown, and they kind of got each little leaf on them here like these guys do. So that's where the word pineapple comes from. Um, and pineapples were first grown in Brazil and Paraguay, which is in South America. Um, so a really, really long ways away from here. Actually, it's almost 4,000 miles if you wanted to get from Maine to South America. So a long ways away. So they were the first ones to really start harvesting and, and growing pineapple farms. Um, if you've never seen a pineapple farm, um, here's kind of a picture of one, but you can see some pineapples right here all lined up in a row and then way off in the background over here, we can see some trucks going around and maybe collecting those pineapples that are actually ripe. So, so big, big pineapple farms um, are grown in these tropical climate areas. Outside of South America, where pineapples are still grown, um, most of the pineapples that we eat that get grown and shipped to us are grown in Hawaii, Southern California, and the very southern tip of Florida, where it's really, really warm all year round. The pineapple plant itself is actually pretty cool. Um, because when you are looking to start growing pineapples, you actually use the top of the pineapple. So this green part here, which is called the crown. Um, so I'll kind of show you how to, how to cut this up and get it ready for us to eat. Um, but basically the very first step you do is you take a knife and you cut this, the crown, you cut this green part right off. 
because this is not edible. Um, and so you actually use that to start growing a new pineapple plant. And so I have a picture here. You can see, you know, here's this person's nice pineapple ready to pick, be picked and eaten. Um, and you can see underneath here is where that person picked the pineapple from. Um, so the plant kind of grows up from the ground and then the pineapple actually grows right out of the top of the plant. But if you notice, these really big leaves here all over the plant, they look oddly similar to the top or the crown of the pineapple. And that's because that person cut off their pineapple crown, planted it in the ground with some soil, some water, some warm weather, lots of sun, and it started growing a new pineapple. So pretty cool. Another kind of interesting thing about pineapples and how they grow is that it takes them a really, really long time for a pineapple plant to grow a pineapple before it's ready for us to eat. Um, so the first time you try to grow a pineapple, it can take close to two years before, you, before your pineapple is grown and ready to eat. Um, and then every year after that, it takes about, you get about one pineapple a year. So still a really long time when you think about a tomato plant um, and how many tomatoes you get off of one tomato plant and how quick those tomatoes grow. Um, so tomatoes versus pineapples, really, really big difference. Here is actually a picture of a young pineapple plant. So this is one that's first starting to grow. And you can see here that it it's very red in color and it has sort of leaves coming off of the side. Whereas when you get an adult pineapple plant or a mature pineapple plant, something ready to eat, those leaves kind of lay flat and they almost feel like paper if you try to run your fingers across them. So they, they go through quite a transformation as they're growing. Parts of the plant, we know that this is the crown at the top here. Um, the rind, which me and my students, we've talked about the rind before, which is the outside, that skin. Um, and most of the times you do not eat the rind of whatever fruit you're talking about. In this case, um, our pineapple, and you don't want to eat the outside of that. Probably is, doesn't taste very good. And then right in the center, you can kind of see it here on the bottom of the, of the pineapple right here. Um, there's a core that grows all the way up through the center of the pineapple. Um, and so you'll notice that when you're cutting it up, that core will be kind of hard and it'll look a little bit different. It might have a different color. It'll definitely feel different. It won't be as squishy or juicy um, as the rest of the fruit. And so typically you just, you don't really want to eat any, any of the core because it doesn't taste as good. Um, and then, of course, you have the fruit itself, the pieces that we eat, um, and that makes up most of our plant. Um, so those are kind of the main pieces of our pineapple, of our tropical fruit. Um, and, you know, you can buy, as we've talked about before, you can buy pineapple, you can buy fruit and vegetables many different ways. Um, and so I'll show you, a, I actually have a couple examples, I can show you guys that in a minute. Um, so... So we know that pineapples are fruits, they're tropical fruits, right? Um, and so if you remember on my plate, I want everybody to just kind of point to which section on our my plate our fruit section is. So where would our pineapples go? So I'll give you a second to try to see that and, and find where the fruit section is. All right, how many of you pointed to this red triangle, this red shape over here? So that is our fruit section on our my plate. Remember, my plate tells us what foods are good for our bodies and which foods we should really be focusing on. It also tells us how much of those foods we should be eating. Um, and so you can see that between our fruits and our vegetables, it takes up half of our plate. So that means that a lot of the foods that we eat each day should be fruits and vegetables. Um, another thing to remember um, with our fruits is that we should eat lots of different colored fruits. I know um, me and my students, we've talked about this before, eating 
eating the different colored fruits and why those different colored fruits are good for us. Um, so, so remember my plate whenever you're trying to think about what foods your body should be eating, which foods are healthy, and how many, how much of those foods you should eat every day. Um, speaking about being good for us and eating lots of different colors because those different colors do different things for our bodies, does anybody want to take a guess what vitamin our pineapple has a lot of? So think about some of the vitamins my students that have um, that I got to, to teach before school ended. Um, think about the vitamins that we've talked about. And why doesn't everybody take a guess? What vitamin do you think pineapple has? How many of you said vitamin C? Huh? So pineapple has a lot of vitamin C. And if you remember, vitamin C does one thing really, really good for our bodies. And usually when we talk about this thing, I like everyone to put up an X or a shield like this. So everybody think about vitamin C, put up your shields. And what does our shield do? What does our shield help our body do? Who remembers? Yeah, it helps our body protect, against, protect ourselves against germs, right? So it's really important that we always wash our hands and we wash our fruit, our food, our vegetables. Um, but it's really good for us to eat foods that have lots of vitamin C because those foods, that vitamin, helps protect our body against germs so that we don't get sick. All right. And there's one other thing that our pineapple has a lot of, and that's something called fiber. And so we've talked about fiber before. I'm, I'm hoping that some of you have heard fiber before in, in some of these earlier classes. Um, and if you remember, fiber is really good for us because it helps keep our bellies full. Uh, and so whenever I talk about fiber with my students, with you guys, I always like to rub, our, rub my belly and have you guys rub your belly to remember that it keeps our bellies full and it helps our belly and our digestive system stay healthy. So pineapples, again, pretty, pretty healthy for us, really good for us, and they're really tasty. These are actually, pineapples are actually one of my favorite fruits of all time. So I'm excited to do this class. All right, so next I want to talk about something um, called the food system and the different steps of the food system. Um, so just a few minutes ago, we talked about how, uh, pineapples can't grow here in Maine because it doesn't stay warm enough. They need that tropical climate, right? Um, and so people, we have to get our pineapple from places like Florida, Hawaii, um, California, or way out in Brazil. Um, and so there's quite a few steps in order for us to, um, get that food here to us and for us to eat it. Um, so the first step of this food process is the step called production. And so production is essentially the planting and the farming of our pineapple plant. Um, and so I showed you that this picture earlier of these pineapple farms, right? And so here we have our pineapple farm. So this would be the production step of the food system. The next step is something called processing. Um, so first you grow the food and now you have to get the food ready for people to eat. You have to process it. Um, so that usually involves the simple steps of washing, cutting, and packaging the fruit. Um, and so that process is done in multiple different ways. Um, if you are purchasing a pineapple, like our fresh pineapple that I was just showing you, um, that is really just washing it and getting it ready to be shipped, which is a later step. Um, it's, but you can buy food in multiple different ways. Um, so we talked about being able to buy pineapple fresh, like my big pineapple that I just showed you. Um, being able to buy it frozen or in cans, 
And so those take multiple steps. You have to cut up the fruit, you have to wash it, you have to put it in the can or freeze it and put it in the bag and get it ready to be shipped. So that's that second step. The third step is transportation, getting this food from where it's grown to where people are going to be able to eat it. Um, and so me and my students, we've talked about this, you guys, we've talked about this a couple different times. Um, and typically those foods are transported to us by truck. Um, a lot of foods are in order to ship enough of that food in order to get enough pineapples from Hawaii to Maine. Um, it, it's not really effective to fly them here, although it's faster. They, you know, to, to put that many pineapples on a plane would weigh too much. Um, so, so usually trucking is the primary mode of transportation, um, you could also, they also use boats and airplanes when, when it makes sense. Okay. So that's the third step. The fourth step is something called distribution. And so distribution is basically the buying and the selling of the fruit. So we've gone, let's say that our pineapple that I was, that I have over here, let's say that it was grown in Hawaii. So the production is the planting and the farming of that pineapple in Hawaii, and then processing it, they they get it, pick it, they wash it, make sure it's ripe and ready for us to eat, and they send it on a boat, and then I would guess maybe a truck, to bring it here to us for Maine. And um, once it's here in Maine, they then sell it to a grocery store or a farmer's market. Um, and then that farmer's market sells it to us. Um, so that's the distribution piece of it. That can get confusing, um, but that's that's basically the idea, is that people buy and sell the fruit, the food. Um, and then the fifth part, which is my favorite part, is the consumption of the food. So that's where we get to eat it. We get to cook it. We get to make different recipes with it, and we get to enjoy it, taste it. Um, and then the last piece is composting or recycling. So how many of you have a compost pile or a compost bin at your house? I bet maybe some of you that have gardens at your house have thought about, your, maybe your parents have thought about doing a compost pile, maybe they have one. Um, and so composting is just basically taking these scraps from the food, um, the rind that we talked about we don't eat, or the core, um, or if you're not going to grow another pineapple, use the crown. It's basically taking that, those table scraps, the leftovers that we don't eat, and being able to repurpose it. Um, so for composting, a lot of people compost um, so that they can grow, use really good soil to grow more fruit or vegetables. Um, and then, you know, the process starts all over again. Once it's composted, once it's put into the ground to help nourish new fruits and vegetables, then you go back to that production phase. So those are kind of the different steps of the food system. Um, and I think it's really important for us to know those steps and the process that these fruits and vegetables go through in order for us to to eat them in order for us them to get to us so that we can enjoy them and keep our bodies healthy because it is a lot of work in order to ship food grow grow foods and ship them and get them ready for us to eat if especially if they're being grown far away away so kind of interesting um and now we're going to go on to our next section which is my favorite part the part that I know a lot of you guys enjoy. It's one of my favorite parts when we're in school, when we're doing class. Um, we get to taste these foods. We get to try them and see how if we like them or if we don't. Um, so what I have in front of me here is actually a couple different ways for you to try pineapple. So we have our fresh pineapple. So I took a minute and I cut up that big pineapple that I showed you a picture of earlier. Um, and so I've just cut it up into small chunks. That's my favorite way to eat it, just like that. You can see that there. 
Um, and that's, that's just some fresh pineapple ready to go. Now you can make salads with that. You can add it to stir fries. Um, there's a lot that can be done with our fresh pineapple. So don't be afraid to try different things with your pineapple. Um, and speaking of that, here are the pieces of our pineapple. So when I cut it up, I saved the core. So you can see, maybe you can see right here, it's a little bit of a different color right there. And then even right here in the middle, um, you, that's where the bottom of the pineapple was. And that's that center piece. So you, it's still very slippery, but you can see that it's much tougher. It's harder than our juicy pineapple pieces that are ready for us to eat. Um, here is our rind that I talked that I talked to you guys about. So just the skin of the pineapple. Um, you can see that the skin kind of grows into the pineapple pieces. And so when you're cutting up your fresh pineapple, you may get just some little brown spots like that in there. Um, and that's perfectly normal. Those are fine for us to eat. Um, but we do not, probably don't want to eat that piece. And then lastly, the top of our pineapple or the crown. Um, so remember I said that you can use this to grow a new pineapple plant. So you can see I just sliced it right off the top of the pineapple here. Um, and if I was going to grow with that, I would just plant that, get that ready to, to be planted into the, some soil. Make sure it stayed nice and warm, got lots of sunlight. And eventually a new pineapple plant would grow right out of the top here. And would we say two years later? Something like that. So that's our fresh pineapple. That's how we get that ready for us to eat. Um, and like I said, that's probably my favorite way for us to eat, for me to eat pineapple. But sometimes the store doesn't have fresh pineapple. So here are a couple different ways that you can get your pineapple. Um, a really inexpensive way, one that doesn't cost a lot of money, is canned pineapple. And so I, this is just a picture of the can here. Um, you can see we actually already ate ours. Couldn't wait. Um, and sometimes you can buy it in chunks, just like I cut up my fresh pineapple over here. Sometimes you can buy it where it's in a ring or a circle. Um, lots of different ways there, but you can buy it canned and that, and it's still really, really tasty. We actually just put ours on pizza the other night. I know that some of you have mentioned you like pineapple on your pizza before. Um, and then... A third way, and kind of a very different way, if you haven't tried pineapple like this, um, I would encourage you to really try it. Um, and so this is called dehydrated pineapple. And so basically what it is, is you take your fresh pineapple and you cook it for a low heat at a really, really long time and it kind of sucks all the juices out of it, but it still gives you that pineapple flavor. So you can kind of see, it looks kind of like a pineapple, right? And it still has that kind of same shape. It's still yellow. It's just dry now, um, it, but still really, really tasty. Um, I love using our dried fruits, especially dried pineapple for um, trail mix and things like that. So, so give that one a try too. Um, you can also buy it frozen. Usually they just come in frozen food bags like this. You know. So these here are some frozen berries that I have in my freezer. Um, these are blueberries, raspberries, and blackberries. Um, but you can buy pineapple that looks just like this. It comes cut up into chunks usually, but it's frozen and in a bag. So a lot about pineapples. Um, I, like I said, I would encourage you guys, when you, since you have some free time at home, to maybe learn a little bit more about pineapples um, and try them and try them in multiple, multiple ways. Um, like I said, this is my favorite way to eat it nice and fresh, but I still really enjoy being able to do pineapple, different things with my pineapple, like my dehydrated stuff. So, so let me know what you guys think. Um, if you're trying pineapple for the first time and you really like it, maybe you want to share on Facebook, have your mom or dad or your grown-ups um, take a picture of you trying some pineapple and share it with our main SnapEd Facebook page 
or you can share it to the place where I work, which is actually Somerset Public Health. We have our own Facebook page, and so you can show us too. So uh, don't be afraid to, to dig in, get dirty, try, try some pineapples, and make sure you guys are having fun. Um, I hope to see you again really soon. All right. Bye.